Raj. And I'm Deanna, and today we're going to talk about the LAC operon. The LAC operon is an example of an inducible promoter, and it's responsible for encoding the genes for lactose metabolism. First, the uh, genes involved in the LAC, uh, repress, uh, LAC operon, um, the first one being LAC-I, which is the gene that encodes for the LAC repressor. The second is the LAC-Z gene, which encodes for beta-galactosidase. And beta-galactosidase has two really important functions. The first being um, the conversion of lactose into lactose and glucose. And the second being the conversion of lactose to allolactose. Um, and allolactose is an inducer, which binds to the repressed lac I repressor and changes the repressor's conformation so that it falls away from the gene and no longer inhibits transcription. LAC-Y and LAC-A um, are two semi-unimportant um, genes that are also involved. LAC-Y encodes for lactose permease, and then LAC-A encodes for beta-galactoside transacetylase. So as you can see up here, we also have the operator sites labeled. Um, operator 1 is where the LAC-I repressor binds, and we also have operator 3 and operator 2 labeled on here. Operator 3 and operator 2 are less important, they're less active in this process, so the only operator that's actually involved in repression is operator 1 site. Also over here we have the CAP or CRP binding site, which is where the CAP activator would bind. And then as you can see we have cyclic AMP lab labeled, which is the inducer of so what we have drawn here is uh, the LAC operon at basal levels of transcription. E. coli preferentially uses glucose, um, not lactose, but it will use lactose if glucose is not present. In this case, um, what we're describing here is glucose is present and lactose isn't, so we don't really have to worry too much about the lactose part. Um, so this is what normally happens in E. coli. So when glucose is present, we have a decreased amount of CAMP production. And in case you don't remember, CAMP stands for cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Um, since CAMP is low, we don't have um, enough binding to the CAP protein, and which then means that there's, not, there's, not, there's no CAP on the CAP region of the operon, which significantly, significantly decreases the amount of transcription that occurs. In addition to this, um, the, also another factor that causes um, this decreased amount of transcription of, this, of these series of genes is the lack of the presence of lactose. And since there's no lactose, there's not, there's not really much allolactose present. Um, and since there's no allolactose, the repressor remains on the operator site. and that decreases the amount of transcription as well. Um, so there is the chance that CAP can bind randomly or s the repressor can fall off randomly. And when this happens, you do have some transcription of these genes, um, but it's not a significant amount. Right, so just in summary, if we have high levels of glucose, that's going to correspond to low levels of cyclic AMP. So the cyclic AMP inducer will not be bound to the CAP protein, meaning that the CAP activator will not be bound to the CAP binding site. In addition, if we have low levels of lactose, that's going to correspond to low levels of allolactose, meaning that the allolactose inducer will not be bound to the repressor, and the repressor will still be bound to the LAC operon inhibiting transcription. Okay, so next we have the lac operon in low levels of transcription. So that would be in the presence of glucose and also now the presence of lactose. So as you can see, just as before, in the presence of glucose, there's going to be low levels of cyclic AMP. So the cyclic AMP inducer will not be able to bind the CRP protein and it will not be bound to the cap binding site on the lac operon. So now in contrast, in the presence of lactose, we now have enough allolactose, the inducer, to bind to the lac I repressor to remove it from the lac operon and increase levels of transcription. So the result is transcription at a higher level than the basal level which we had before, but still very low levels of transcription. So in summary, we have glucose present, 
which means that we have a low amount of CMP, so the cap protein does not bind to its binding site. Um, and we also, so that means that there is a lower amount of transcription. But then we also have this, um, we have lactose present, which means that there is no allolactose there's high levels of allolactose, which means that the repressor does not bind. So that there, so there is still some transcription then that occurs, which is why we have a little bit more than basal, but not as much as the third condition. So in the final situation, we have no glucose present and we have plenty of lactose present. This is the, this forces E. coli to use lactose metabolism instead of the preferred glucose metabolism. So with glucose not present in the cell, we have an increase in the levels of CAMP, which means that CAP is bound to, the, um, to its binding site on the operon um, because CAMP is bound to the CAP protein. Um, this increases the amount of transcription compared to the, um, the basal levels, but like a lot. Um, and we have lactose present, which means that the allolactose is also present, which binds to the lac I repressor, causing it to fall away from the operator, which also induces more transcription. So we have like a double effect where we have a lot of transcription occurring, um, which is why we have high over there. So there's a lot more transcription occurring compared to the basal and the low levels. Great, so just in summary, with no glucose, we have high levels of cyclic AMP, which would correspond to the CAP or CRP protein bound to the CAP binding site, increasing levels of transcription. In the presence of lactose, we have high levels of allolactose, meaning that the lac repressor is no longer bound to the operon, again, increasing levels of transcription, resulting in the highest level of transcription here. So that's it for the LAC operon. Thanks for watching our video and good luck on your exam. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.